In this lesson, we're going to go over genotypes, phenotypes, alleles, and Punnett squares. The genotype is a letter combination representing the alleles, and a phenotype is what the trait looks like. When you think of phenotype, think of photo. Both start with the letters PH. When you look at a photo, you are looking at the physical expressions of everybody in that photo or what the photo is about. Where you could see the phenotype, but never the genotype. The genotype is something that would have to get tested for. Um, this brings us to Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel studied pea plants, and on those pea plants had two different colored flowers. Uh, we have purple flowers and we have white flowers. Purple flowers being the phenotype and a white flower being a, a phenotype, both having physical expressions of those genes. Now, looking at the first flower to the very far left, we have the phenotype, or excuse me, the genotype of capital P, capital P. This is known as homozygous dominant. Both of the alleles are uppercase. Both of the alleles are dominant. In the middle flower, this is known as being heterozygous. Heterozygous, you have two different alleles. The uppercase letter would represent the purple flower. The lowercase p, the lowercase letter, would represent the white flower. Since this has two different alleles, your uppercase or dominant letter overshadows the recessive lowercase letter. That's why you have a phenotype of being purple. Uh, lastly, the flower to the far right has two lowercase p's. This is known as homozygous recessive. Both of these alleles are recessive. Now, if purple flowers are a dominant trait, any genotype with a dominant allele will be purple. The Punnett squares. A Punnett square is a quick way to show how alleles will be combined in the next generation. Now, when calculating Punnett squares, if I were to cross two heterozygous purple flowers, heterozygous is going to be a capital and a lowercase, both having different alleles. Um, two purple flowers are crossed. I'm going to take one of those heterozygous and put them on the top. But now I said each parent is heterozygous. On the left-hand side, I'm going to take the same heterozygous and put that onto the left. If crossing the letters in the Punnett square will give you the genotype, the possible combinations of what your future offspring will be. So if I take a letter from the side and bring that over into this box, and I take a letter from the top and bring that down into this box, you will see that we have homozygous dominant. Over on the right top right-hand side, if I were to bring this dominant allele, this capital letter P, bring that over to the right, and I have this recessive allele on top and I bring that down, I, that's going to result in being heterozygous. The bottom left box, you have to be aware that this is a lowercase p. Yes, I'm going to bring the lowercase p over, and I'm going to bring this dominant p coming down. But the dominant letter always comes first. The dominant letter is going to overshadow the recessive letter, making this heterozygous. Finally, in my bottom right box, I have a recessive allele at the top, and I have a recessive allele on the left-hand side. I bring that recessive allele over to the right, and then I bring that recessive allele down, and that is going to result in homozygous recessive. Heterozygous is going to be 50%. Homozygous dominant is going to be 25%. And then the percentage of being homozygous recessive is going to be 25%. Now, what percentage will result in a purple phenotype? That's going to be 75%. Since I have the dominant gene in each of these three boxes, the dominant gene overshadows these recessive, re recessive traits. So you have a phenotype of being purple. Now, what's the percentage of being white? You have 25% white, and that's indicated in the bottom right-hand square. For your second example, I'm going to cross two parents, a female with blue eyes and a male with brown eyes. Female blue eyes is homozygous recessive, and the female brown eyes is homozygous dominant. So, when crossing and using Punnett squares, 
the female's alleles are always going to go on the top and the male's alleles are always going to go on the left hand side. So I'm going to take the female's homozygous recessive traits, put them on the top, and I'm going to take the homozygous dominant male's traits or alleles and put them over on the left hand side. And I'm going to come and cross these. I'm going to take this capital letter, this dominant allele and bring that over to the left, excuse me, bring that over to the right. And I'm going to take the female's recessive allele and I'm going to bring that down. And this is going to result in a heterozygous cross. In this upper right hand quadrant, I'm going to bring dad's or the male's allele over to the right. And I'm going to take the female's allele and bring that down. That is o going to result in heterozygous as well. The same can be said for the bottom two boxes. The bottom left box, I bring that dominant trait over, I bring the recessive trait down, I bring that dominant trait over, and I bring that recessive trait down, resulting in a phenotype of being all brown eyes, with 100% being heterozygous. For my next example, example number three, I'm going to cross two plants. One plant being a homozygous dominant, which is going to go at the top, and then one plant that is going to be heterozygous, and that's going to go on the left-hand side. Crossing comes down to just exactly how we have seen. You're going to take this uppercase dominant Y, bring that over to the right, and then you also have this uppercase dominant Y, and you're gonna bring that down. Same thing applies for the upper right-hand box. I take this dominant allele, bring that over the right. This dominant allele from the top, I bring that down. So we have this homozygous dominant. One of the possibilities of the offspring is going to be homozygous dominant. On the bottom, please don't get confused that this is a lowercase y. I'm going to bring that lowercase y over that recessive allele, and I'm going to bring this dominant um, y going down. I don't write or will ever write my genotype as lowercase, uppercase. It's always going to go uppercase, lowercase, because the dominant allele overshadows my recessive. The same thing for the bottom right box. So when looking at the possible offspring, possible offspring could be that you have 50% homozygous dominant, and we could have 50% heterozygous. The phenotype is going to result in having 100% yellow peas. For example, number four, I'm going to cross one homozygous dominant and one homozygous recessive. I take my yellow peas and I put them at the top and then I put my green peas over on the side. Please indicate that on the left-hand side that these are lowercase letters because they are the recessive genes. I'm going to make a cross on the following, and I have my upper coming down, and I have my recessive coming over to the right. Remember, dominancy is important. So you have your dominant overshadows your recessive. That's indicated in each of these boxes. So the Y comes over, and then the dominant comes down, but dominant precedes the recessive. This results in 100% of the offspring being heterozygous for yellow peas. Now this one's very important because I'm gonna cross yellow peas that have the recessive letter Gs, and I have green peas which have heterozygous for G. So we can see that we have the dominant allele and the dominant allele is shown. And I'm using G instead of Y to indicate we have green. We have the color green here. So we're gonna go with that dominant color. So G standing for green is going to be our dominant allele. I'm going to take the yellow peas. I'm gonna take those that genotype, split up the alleles, put the lowercase g's, my recessive alleles over onto the top. And then I'm gonna take my heterozygous uh, over onto the side for the green. And I am going to cross each. I'm gonna bring this capital G over and this lowercase g down. So I have my dominant, I have my recessive, which is gonna code for heterozygous. 
in the upper right hand box i also have heterozygous in my bottom left box i have homozygous recessive and in my bottom right box i also have homozygous recessive so looking at the possible genotypes for the offspring i have two and i have two so my phenotypes i could have two green and i could have two yellow so this comes down to 50 percent I have 50% heterozygous and I have 50% homozygous recessive. The phenotypes, as mentioned, would could be 50% green, 50% yellow. Example number six, we're gonna cross the following. Blonde hair is homozygous dominant, red hair is homozygous recessive. Blonde hair is dominant, so we're going to use the letter B. Since it's homozygous dominant, we have two of the same alleles, so both uppercase letters, since both of these are dominant. Now, homozygous recessive, I cannot use capital capital, because that would code for blonde. I cannot use heterozygous, I cannot use capital lowercase, because that will code for blonde. So for homozygous recessive, I have to use two lowercase letters. And then you cross these as you did with the other ones. I'm going to bring the B over to the left over, and I'm gonna bring the dominant allele down. Remember, dominancy comes into factor to where you have heterozygous. You have your dominant allele first, and you have your recessive allele second. Uh, in the top right box is also gonna be heterozygous. In my bottom left box, heterozygous. And in my bottom right box is going to be heterozygous. This is gonna wind up with a phenotype of being 100% blonde and 100% heterozygous. But now we know that the dominant gene or the dominant allele represents blonde hair and the recessive allele represents red hair. So we're going to cross two heterozygous with capital B lowercase b alleles for blonde hair. So two heterozygous, both the parents are going to be the same. When you have the same parents, the cross that happens within this first quadrant, this upper left quadrant, results in homozygous dominant. When I cross the upper right and bottom left quadrants, it results in offspring possibility of being heterozygous. And then finally, in my bottom right quadrant, it's a result that could possibly be red hair. So in regards to phenotype, there's a 75% chance that my phenotype is going to come out as blonde. There's a 25% chance that the phenotype, my offspring, is going to be born with red hair. In regards to dominancy, we have 25% homozygous dominant, we have 50% heterozygous, and we have 25% homozygous recessive. To the next example. If a plant with the genotype of heterozygous T's is crossed with a plant with the same genotype, what's the percentage that their offspring will have the same genotype? So I give you the one genotype, and that's going to be heterozygous. So we're going to put heterozygous at the top. Now I say that we're going to cross this with the same type of genotype. So we're going to put the same heterozygous code and alleles over on the left hand side. When we cross, we have one homozygous dominant, we have two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. Now, the question had asked the percentage of the, what percentage of the offspring is going to be the same genotype as the parents? As seen, the genotype of the parents is heterozygous. So looking at our possibilities in our Punnett square, our capital T, lowercase t, heterozygous, will code for 50%. There's a 50% chance that the offspring will be heterozygous. Next example, example number nine. A rabbit with black fur is dominant and is crossed with a rabbit with white fur. If all the offspring have black fur, what's the genotype of the parents? As you notice, you have a Punnett square and you see all possibilities of what their offspring could potentially be. What you do not see is the genotype of the parents, and that's something that we have to figure out. So what you have to do is you have to do your Punnett square, but backwards. So we know that we have two dominant alleles, and we were supposed to get an allele from the left-hand side 
and an allele with the from the upper on top of the Punnett square. So if we do that, if we bring one of these alleles out, you see that you have a capital B. If I bring one of those alleles up, we also have a dominant. So this box is accounted for. Now looking at the far right box, we know that this allele from the far left side has to come over to this box. And now that uppercase B, that dominant allele, is accounted for. But what's not accounted for is this lowercase b. So we know that the top allele has to be the recessive gene. Looking at the bottom left box, we know we do not know the allele for here yet uh, on the outside of the Punnett square. We still have to figure out this allele. But we're given one allele at the very top, and that codes for the dominant trait. So by process of elimination, we know that the other allele has to be dominant on the outside of the box. Next question, question number 10. In fruit flies, the gene for wing shape is controlled by a single gene with two alleles. Natural ring, excuse me, normal wings are dominant and vestigial wings are recessive. To have vestigial wings means that the fly has shortened wings and the fly cannot fly. So if two heterozygous flies are crossed, what is, is the expected genotype ratio of their offspring? So we've seen this example before to where we have two heterozygous parents and we cross them as so. We have heterozygous dominant. We have 50% outcome that the offspring could be heterozygous. And then we have a 25% chance that the offspring could be homozygous recessive. But now when doing ratios, we have to think of about dominancy and dom dominancy order. And dominancy order goes from homozygous dominant, heterozygous to homozygous recessive. So I have my homozygous dominant, so that's one homozygous, excuse me, heterozygous, which would be to two, and then we have homozygous recessive, which would be to one. So that's a one to two to one ratio. The last question that we have, in rabbits, black fur is dominant to white fur. If a purebred black furred rabbit is crossed with a purebred white furred rabbit, what is the expected genotype of their hybrid offspring? You have to know what purebred is. To be purebred, purebred correlates with homozygous. Dominant and purebred correlates with homozygous recessive, two of the same alleles. I give you the purebred black furred parent. We know it has to be two of the same alleles and the black furred parent is dominant. The white furred parent is recessive and purebred. So it has to be two lowercase letters. You make the cross and you have the following, 100% heterozygous parents. Every single time purebred parents are crossed.